Oh yeah, happy black kid thing, y'all. Yo. That intro wasn't pretty much an indication. It's Black History Month, y'all. And, well, with me being, well, black, you know, a part of the Melanin Gang, you know, being black, y'all, I wanted to do something special. And what better way than to talk about two things I love, Spider-Man and video games. I'm thinking that's the only reason y'all subscribe to the channel. And Miles Morales was, well, the perfect game to talk about. It's a combination of both, you know. And plus, he's, you know, my favorite interpretation of Miles. In my favorite interpretation of Spider-Man in general, you know, with the popularity of Into the Spider-Verse and, well, Spider-Man in general, like the games and stuff, Miles got some prominent push. And trust me, I, he was already popular enough, but those things just helped put him at the forefront. And I finally, finally, finally obtained the rare treasure of a PS5. Trust me, my nigga, that was not an easy feat. I'm, I'm pretty sure I had to... As Peter Parker once said, beat a lady over the head with some cranberry sauce. But I finally got it. So all of the, all of the you know crispy footage y'all seeing is in that 4K because I got a better capture card too. Look, look, I want to go all out for this because you know gotta celebrate my brother. So y'all know how we do it on here. We got the slang check, mildly offensive humor check, unrelated lo-fi remix transition check, and of course. The personality to go with it. Check. Let's hop into the, today's review of Spider-Man Miles Morales. By the way, th this wasn't planned, but I just wanted to do this review. you do a character like Miles. Miles is drastically different from Peter, which, come on now, you, you, you already know. <laughs> he got that exaggerated swagger of an African-American teen. But, <laughs> no, this is how you definitely want to do a character like this. So let's say even if they do a Spider-Gwen game, they can kind of take from this. You want this character to, t to feel a lot different from how Peter feels because they're their own character, but they also have similar abilities. So you want them to also still hold that mantle up whenever they take up a legacy character's, you know, role. Hell, even how the game opens up is a mad chase in the mall stopping Rhino. Kind of reminding us of the Kingpin chase, but there wasn't really much of a chase. It was more of just teaching you how to play in the first game. Swinging feels great as usual, but Miles has a certain style. He has a certain swagger with how he swings and the tricks he knows how to do. It's a little bit more than how Peter is, where Peter more for show, Miles is more of a show off where he, you know, even will fall fall if you don't catch him correctly because he's still learning to be Spider-Man. If you play the original one, you kind of know how the swinging works and how traversing works, except there's one major difference between Miles and Peter. Miles has bioelectricity abilities or the Venom abilities, pretty much allowing him to traverse a lot faster and get where he needs to go. Basically, these abilities, you know, he can dash in the air. He can also use the electric jump to gain height if you're feeling a little bit lower. Because while I do love that the PS5 had the trigger adaptivity, it felt weird adjusting to it for me. But, you know, that's because I'm so used to the PS4 kind of having these looser triggers. Miles does not have as many tools as Peter does when it comes to the gadget. But his bioelectricity more than makes up for it. It allows you to fling people, he has a venom putt that pretty much breaks shields of enemies, it also does a lot of damage and actually launches enemies very far. P Let's just say bioelectricity is going to be your best friend. Even the bioelectric jump launches enemies with you so you can get off great combos. And of course finishers work. The only thing I gotta say that I don't like about Miles' combat is that his finishers don't work on bigger thugs. But that's where the bigger like bioelectricity actually comes and has an advantage over. Like two hits of bioelectricity knocks out bigger thugs and it's pretty interesting how they do this. Cause it shows how much Spider-Man and well actually it shows how both 
both Miles and Peter are different. Their abilities are a lot different. Also, you do get side quests and missions through an app, which is called the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app. And it really takes an interesting take because it shows just how much Spider-Man and Miles is a part of this world, how they affect each other. And I'll explain more in the story because a lot of it does explain it. Most of the side mission objectives, though, are very boring. You kind of do the same thing, fix an electrical thing, or fix a broken pipe, or take down a criminal. And the only thing that really kept me going back to side stories is that I liked the characters that were involved in them. To be honest, the characters are the main focus of this game, and I love how they do that. It's a real representation of what, you know, Brooklyn and someone that lived... I've never lived in Brooklyn, but I've seen there and I've visited, and Harlem and Brooklyn look very different, and it's amazing how they pretty much implemented that. It looks p different from how Peter's Neck of the Woods did, but you can still visit that. One thing I always liked is how big the world is in these Spider-Man games, and how they're really implementing it. Something that Avengers could have easily done, but hey! <laughs> and a lot of the actual side quests do set up things for future titles to come. But, I will talk about that when we get to the story portion. A lot of people didn't like this story, and well, I disagree because this is honestly a great story tying in the Spider-Man PS4. Miles takes over for Peter Parker after Mary Jane has taken a job abroad and needs him to take pictures. But, side note, how come she only needs him to take pictures and stuff? Like, I know they're in a relationship again and all that, but could you imagine? Yeah, I need you to come all the way to Africa with me to take pictures. Yeah, that don't sound right, do it? Peter needs to get his, mm, out here whipped. Need to get his money up, not his funny up. Leaving the young Miles to take care of New York. Miles, of course, meets up with an old friend and finds out she's the Tinkerer. Which, again, I, I mean, you should have guessed. They don't really even, like, allude to it. Like, they don't give us time to digest that she might be the bad guy. And within the next mission, you find this out. That's pretty much the basic rundown of the whole plot, actually. Pretty cool, because we get to see characters such as Aaron Davis, who is, well, the Prowler. And you get to see other characters kind of hinted at. And we see that how the world that Peter was protecting was affected by him. We see that Gloria, the old homeless woman that we saved in the first game, which is not old, she's like 20. She's actually working at Feast now, and she has a girlfriend, which is cool. Also, we meet so many characters that have, like, kind of just small impacts. Like, a girl that's deaf that helps, P helps Miles figure out that, hey... A very old villain is the Kingpin. The Kingpin is back and for some strange reason attacking Harlem because he wants to get that property. You know, he's trying to out, be out here playing t property tycoon. But also, we all just find out so many things. And also, I'm not going to lie, the premise has been done to death. But with the character, they're a lot more relatable. Miles is a straight up three kid and I'm going to really talk about that in the next segment, how they make these characters relatable. And how they took a trash villain. Because trust me, nobody knew who the Tinkerer was unless you sp played Spider-Man Web of Shadows or read the comics. But they turned him from a trash villain to a dope threat. And they gave the moniker to someone who actually was threatening. Like, Finn was actually scary. But when you get to everyone else, it's like, they know how to balance out these characters. Now, there is one major story decision I don't like, which is that, you no know, Miles' identity is learned by his mother. And I'm like, I don't like when, you know, parental figures know about the identity of the characters. But I'll talk about that later. But the story, much like most of the game, did feel kind of rushed. And I hate to say it, but this might be the only game that Miles and his cat, the characters, are going to have such a prominent role in. I would like a Spider-Man Miles Morales too, but I don't think it's going to happen. And the reason for that, A, we still got a bunch of bigots in this world, and B... I don't see any need to tell any more of his stories at the moment, at least in this universe. Unless something happened dr to Peter drastically that everybody keeps hinting at, which is death, there's no real reason for Miles to have such a big story anymore. But let's get to the next point that I really am excited to talk about. 
When it comes to any type of media, a major debate is always representation. I really don't see why this is a debate, because I feel like everybody should be represented in some way, shape, or form. I remember the first time seeing this game at a PlayStation event and seeing people's reaction to it, and people loving how Miles represented his Afro-Latino culture. The one thing I always hated and debated against is that Miles is half black, half Latino, but people just keep grouping him into one. Mixed people should not have to prove to themselves who they truly are. I loved seeing that everyone deserves to be represented in some shape or form on the screen. Me, I'm a black male and seeing Miles use the same terms as me and really let me see myself in him. Letting me see myself to see that I'm not a stereotype or how they write me is exactly how they would write Miles. Like, these are things that I feel like every kid kid should see, that every person should see, and I love it. Plus, it's, it's really hard to see a lot of representation done right. Miles hasn't been written black in a while. And I'm not until Into the Spider-Verse happened, and until an actual co person of color started writing him. Even Brian Michael Bendis did have his issues with writing Miles, and then when he was written by someone else, it was done different. I was able to see myself in Miles through this game. But also, I know my Afro-Latino family and everything else really did love this. Hearing Miles speak Spanish and fluently put a smile on my face because it shows his Latinx culture. Is just as much as a part of him as his African American culture. But why bring this up? Like, come on, it's a video game. I remember hearing from someone, Miles is a black superhero, but not a Latino superhero. Which, even I had said, what the fuck? To that person, and anyone else who sees it like that, fuck you. Someone of mixed race shouldn't have to prove that race to you. They shouldn't have to speak one way or the other. That goes for anybody of any race. Let me put it this way, Miles is a hero for everyone, and the game proves that, much like how Peter is a hero for everyone. You don't have to be white to understand Peter's struggles, and you don't have to be black black or for Latino X to be, you know, his struggles. You see yourself in these heroes because you see the, yourself in their actions, and I love that. This game has that one lesson, be yourself, and that has always been Miles' lesson is that you can't always be what the person before you, next to you, or the person that comes after you is going to be. You have to be something better. And that's what it showed. Miles had to learn that I can't always be like the other Spider-Man. Gotta be me. I gotta represent my, my Harlem. Just like how Peter had to represent what it means to be a hero in general. Take the outline of what you learn from people, but then learn how to be yourself and how to improve on it. Because there's only one you. Life's a leap of faith. We're just waiting for you to take yours. I know how corny that sounds, but hey, it's Black History Month, y'all. Wow, so um, yeah, that got deep. Look, I know I'm late to the party, but I wanted to do this review with a PS5 and give you the best quality footage. Also, it's Black History Month, and I did want to celebrate something with the black lead that I could actually talk about and, you know, know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. And Miles is a really influential character. I'm glad that he's getting so much shine. And they're actually writing him respectfully and acknowledging his Afro-Latino culture. I love how they represented it. And you guys have to remember, he is Afro-Latino and I love him. Crazy how this last two months has been for the start of the year. I've been kind of either in a super happy mood, like extremely happy. Or I'll go from like being happy to being extremely depressed. There's nothing really wrong, I don't know, it's really natural for me to not just feel like doing anything, but eh. I hope you guys like this video, don't forget to check out the Twitch channel where we play nothing but video games, and we also have our podcast on Twitch, where you can go check out the first two episodes, I don't know if they're gonna stay up long, I might download them and put them on like a spare dummy YouTube account, but yeah, and is there in any other social media, uh, my Twitter there, um, I pretty much post memes and you hear updates and I get pretty much shit post on there. Um, you can go check out my Instagram where you get behind the scenes stuff and all that bull crap. You can go check out the Patreon. There's nothing going on there yet, but I'll figure something out when when this takes off. I don't know. Or anything else on the social media page. Um, like this video. 
and share this video please you know i want people to get to know miles and yeah don't forget to let your heart be your guiding key it's your guiding key and fight for what you believe in no matter even if you're the only one that believes in it and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody i'll see you guys in the next video peace <laughs>